Good afternoon from the Imperial War Museum in London, England. These are two British made 15 inch naval guns. In front of the museum itself, both weigh about 100 tonnes. Both used on board naval ships during the Greco-Turkish War and later during the Second World War. They are capable of firing a nearly 2,000 pound shell nearly 16 miles, so very, very powerful. It is free to get in, but you do have to book a ticket online. And I'm gonna go inside, have a look around, see if I can learn a thing or two and uh, show you what is inside. So without any further ado, there's those guns, the museum behind that. Let's go inside and have a look. I was just about to go into the museum and I spotted this place. It is right next door to the entrance and it is called the Tibetan Peace Garden. It is a lovely little area of flowers and bushes and gardens that uh, I've never been to before. I have passed this way before in London but I've never popped in so I thought I would have a look this time and just see what it's like. An area for relaxation and chilling out I would imagine and then just through these two concrete pillars you can see the guns over there of the museum so we're heading from peace to wartime let's get inside that museum and do some exploring like we have a number of different floors to look at. Down here, zero is the First World War, Second World War, Holocaust galleries, witnesses to war, a roof terrace event space and the Lord Ashcroft gallery. There's the info desk, no one there at the moment. And the atrium area, it's a big place fighter jets and aeroplanes above me and uh, this car here I was reading about this a second ago was destroyed in Baghdad by a suicide bomber you can read all about the various displays on these info boards so here we go 2007 a suicide bomb destroyed the Mat Nabi Street Book Market in Baghdad, capital of Iraq. 38 people were killed. This car is the remains. It looks like it suffered quite a heavy fire. It's pretty much melted down. Another thing that caught my eye was the Press TV armoured Jeep. Very heavily marked up press and TV and all of that, but still suffered quite a lot of damage. I am not sure where this was and what the story is. This is one of the rare displays in the museum that I can't find any information on. But you can see it has suffered substantial damage. That is a Harrier fighter jet above me, used by British forces in Afghanistan. And you can see there lots of steps going up to the various floors. But I think I'm going to start at the beginning gonna head into the First World War display and do some learning. At 11 p.m. on the 4th of August, 1914, Britain, with its vast global empire, declares war on Germany. Armies across continental Europe have already marched off to war. So the First World War raged from 1914 to 1918 and it all started because a Serbian-backed terrorist assassinated Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. Bowing disposition. The fighting excitement vitalizes every nerve. Bowing disposition. We're about to go through an experience of trench warfare.
really interesting display and uh, really brings home just how many people were killed or wounded in the First World War, over 40 million people. It ended in 1918 with an armistice that was signed by Germany. Here we go then, let's go and take a look. So lots of really interesting information about how the war started and of course explaining who the aggressor was. There is the symbol of the Nazi party in Germany and the Second World War went on from 19... 39 officially till 1945. So I'm gonna do the same as I did with World War I. We're gonna walk through and just see some of the highlights and learn a little bit about it. This just shows you how many ships were destroyed during World War II. In 1941, each one of these ships represents five ships in reality. And these were the number of allied ships that were sunk. So you can see, for example, in April 48 ships, May 66, June 65. But the ships sunk in 1941 paled in comparison to the amount of ships that were sunk in 1942, a lot of them by German U-boats. You can see here the same months, we're now up to like 146 some months. 131 in August and then Britain started to work out how to sink these German U-boats in 1943 so again there is a sharp decline now in the amount of Allied ships that were sunk in 1943 so we're back down to 27 and 62 still a lot but better than what it was in previous years The end of the Second World War came with German and Japanese surrender in 1945. Unfortunately, by the end of the war, over 60 million people had lost their lives. I've left the Second World War section. I'm in the Witnesses to War now. All these different artifacts and objects that played a part in war. This is a captured German radar system. And then just here is the inside of a Lancaster bomber. That's the cockpit. Very, very uh, useful in the Second World War, I think. Lots of artillery, guns, massive weapons, ships and boats. Look at this, this is a model of a British oil tanker. And then I was talking about the German U-boats a little bit earlier. On my left here is the torpedo from one of those. You can see how massive it is. No wonder it did so much damage and took out so many ships. And from a Chevrolet truck, this is something that does interest me. Look at this, this is a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. It was used in a lot of successful British aircraft including hurricanes, mosquitoes, Lancasters. It was the engine of choice during the Second World War. Heading up now to the last gallery, the one that I haven't visited yet, the Lord Ashcroft Gallery. Closed for maintenance, so I guess I won't be visiting that one today. Never mind. It has been a very interesting experience coming here to the War Museum here in central London. That announcement will be telling me that the museum's about to close. I think it's about 10 to six. So I'm gonna call it a day with the video. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.